Hey guys, wanted to show you a quick thing that I've learned with uh, Photoshop and Pixelmator. Uh, Pixelmator is a great Mac app. It's a great alternative to Photoshop. Um, it's pretty powerful. I've had it since ver before version 2 and they've on, they're on to version 3. For 30 bucks, you can hardly go wrong with, with this app. Um, they've, they're adding new features all the time. What I like about it is it's it's really quick and simple. They've got a lot of built-in effects and stuff like that. But in using it for the church mag uh, images, um, for like the header images and stuff, I've I've learned that there is a definite difference in uh, how it handles images and adjusting the size and stuff. So I just want to show you real quick, especially for those that are considering possibly getting Photoshop but would rather go with a cheaper alternative and while Pixelmator is a great app and, and fairly powerful, um, this is definitely something you might, might want to consider. So I've got this kind of template thing that I have here for the Church Mag podcast and you can see, you know, we've got previous previous uh, images. Now I'm going to bring in a new one. And so I got it in here. And we've got a, a very happy minion. Let me let me resize it a little bit. Get him to fit in there. Zoom in here. All right. Looks great. And go to Photoshop and we can do the same exact same thing. Of course this isn't this is just, you know, a, a test um, test size or whatever. This isn't a, a template that I use for that church mag um, podcast thing. All right. So at this point they're relatively the same, right? But if we shrink this image down in Pixelmator to try to get the right size, and then we change our mind, and we want to go bigger. Hopefully you can see with the quality of the video that we've completely lost the, re the resolution of this JPEG or PNG file, whatever it is. This image file is completely pixelated, and that can be really frustrating if you're trying to tweak things just right. It's one thing to try it and then hit undo. It does restore the uh, the resolution, but if you you know adjust the size of, of of an image, a JPEG, or even a graphic like the Church Mag podcast logo, if I if I adjust that, okay, like I said, you know if I adjust it down and I hit undo, it goes right back. But if I do it, and say okay, and then I want to do it back, it becomes all fuzzy and pixelated. So again, uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of cool features in Pixelmator. If I go all the way back and I hide this little group, um, you can see there's uh, even stuff like Vintage where you can, you know, kind of use some of these Instagram-ish kind of filters, which is really cool because if you don't know Photoshop, Pixelmator, you know, you plug it in and you can do all kinds of really cool stuff without all those settings that can be really overwhelming. Now, if we do the similar thing over here in Photoshop, Let's say we're working on something and we make the happy minion small. We adjust it, move it around. We go, you know what? I want this thing bigger. So you make it bigger. All right. You say, okay. You will see that the resolution has retained itself. So the happy minion is still happy. He's got decent resolution. So if you are shopping around or you're considering a Photoshop alternative, Whatever the case may be, this was a little thing that I learned, and so I thought I'd pass it on to you and, and let you see kind of the difference between Pixelmator and Photoshop, and that while Pixelmator is a great app, like I said a bunch of times already, for 30 bucks it's not bad, it really doesn't compare as uh, with Photoshop when it comes to this kind of stuff. So anyway, before I approach a project, I think, should I use Photoshop or should I use Pixelmator? And I go from there. Thanks, guys.